Hello everybody and welcome back to Rustic Moose Coins. Steve here. Uh, today's video is going to be about the very absolute basics. Uh, coin collecting 101, coin collecting for dummies, or as my wife likes to say, coin collecting for dum-dums. Uh, we're going to be talking about the terminology uh, when used when coin collecting and the anatomy of a coin that you are going to need to know to make yourself more educated, to make better decisions when buying or selling coins. Uh, so we'll be going over the anatomy of a coin, like I mentioned before, what terms you're most likely going to come across when collecting, buying, or selling. Uh, these are terms you're going to need to know to help educate yourself to make better, more informed decisions before you start buying or selling or collecting. Uh, knowledge is key in this hobby, and it is very important to know these terms before you start buying and selling and collecting. <laughs> Today's video is for the absolute beginner, somebody that has little to no knowledge of coins or coin collecting as a hobby, someone that maybe inherited a collection and doesn't even know where to start. Uh, terminology and uh, the anatomy of a coin is a great place to start. There's a ton of information you need to know to make an informed decision. Uh, there's a ton of research that goes in, into coin collecting or even when it comes to the sale or purchase of a coin. You need to know what you're talking about. Uh, there are people out there in this hobby that will take advantage of people that don't know any better, which is unfortunate, but uh, I'm going to give you some knowledge and give you the power to help make some of these informed decisions. So the first thing that I want to get into is the anatomy of a coin because it's the most basic we can get. So this is a really good graphic that I'm going to use on this video, and it helps break down the anatomy of a coin. So some of the main, main terminology, you have the motto, the device, the date, the mint mark, uh, relief, field, designer's initials, legend, motto, again, um, edge, rim, and denomination. So when it comes to motto, it just it's the motto of the country in which the coin was minted. So in the case of this penny, uh, in God we trust on the obverse here. The device is a defining graphic, usually a portrait uh, on the obverse and a crest or image on the reverse. You have the date, which is the year that the coin was minted or produced. You have the mint mark, um, and there are three main mint marks, P, D, and S, standing for Philadelphia, uh, Denver, and San Francisco. Although the further back in time you go, there are older mints that exist. Um, the date and mint mark, and even the motto and the portraits obviously are different, and they all vary from series to series. So just because they're located here on this Lincoln cent does not mean that they're gonna be located in the same position on other series. So it really comes down to knowledge of a specific series before you start buying or selling coins. So you really wanna figure all this out, but these are the basic terminology uh, that you'll need to know. Uh, relief is any part of the coin that's raised and not in the field. Um, and then speaking of field, it's the flat surface of a coin that serves as a background and it's completely unused. Uh, designer's initials as seen here on this Lincoln Penny, the VDB. Um, it's usually discreetly placed somewhere on the coin. Um, you have the legend on the reverse, the main lettering on top of the coin that usually states the, uh, the originating country. The motto, so the motto of the country in which the coin was minted, so E Pluribus Unum uh, on United States coinage. You have the edge of the coin, which is the very outside of the coin. It's not pictured well on this graphic. But the edge is actually known as the third side. So it's actually the outer edge of the coin known as the third side of the coin. So you have the front, the back, and then you have the edge of the coin. Not to be confused with the rim, which is the outer edge that's slightly raised for protection of the coin. Uh, which is on, the rim is actually on the front and back of the coin as opposed to the edge of the coin. A few other terms you may hear while collecting is obverse and reverse, and that simply is the front and back of a coin. So obverse of the coin is the head side or uh, front of the coin, and the reverse is the tail side or back of the coin. So that's all that means, obverse and reverse, front and back. And here are some other terms that you may hear when you're collecting or uh, buying or selling. Numismatics or numismatists is the study and collecting of things used as money. So coins, metals, tokens, paper, uh, numismatics is the study of, and a numismatist is the person who collects or studies 
uh, ANA, American Numismatic Association. They're a nonprofit educational group that encourages the study of money worldwide. And they are a fantastic organization. They are nonprofit. Um, you can join the group. You have to pay a, uh, a, a fee to, to get in, but they are a fantastic group. They have a lot of um, resources available. Uh, their website is money.org, and you can join anytime. Um, but it helps you. You can find a coin group locally to join if there are any in your area. You can find a dealer. You can contact. Like I said, there's a ton of resources. They have a national library that you can borrow from at any time. It's a really nice um, organization that helps a lot of beginning collectors out. Bullion is another term that you're going to hear. Uh, and it's not a coin, but it is a precious metal, whether it's gold, silver, platinum. Uh, it's any precious metal that can be in the form of a coin or a bar or an ingot. Um, so it's not necessary. It's not a coin because it doesn't have a denomination on it, but it is. It can be in a round or a uh, coin form. Uh, so that's known as bullion. They sell by the weight of the precious metal. A graded coin is another term you may hear, and that is a coin that has a grade attached to it between a, a number of one and seventy. Se one being the worst grade and 70 being a perfect coin. I'm going to be going over graded coins in a different video because there is a lot of information about uh, the grading of coins. It's very subjective, uh, so stay tuned for that video. And then in, in tandem with a graded coin, you'll hear the term slab, which is uh, a term used by collectors as a third party holder. So these coins get graded by a third party and then they are placed in the slab holders to help preserve the coin. Uh, the three big names in the slab or the third uh, party grading services are PCGS, NGC, and ANACS, also known as Annex. Uh, so those are the three big companies, third party companies that grade coins. Uh, those are the most widely accepted among coin collectors. Clad is another term that you're going to hear when coin collecting or buying or selling, and it simply refers to a clad composition. And it's a coin like this 1996 quarter that has uh, inner and outer core or inner and outer layers that are made of different materials. So the inner core is usually copper, and the outer layer is usually a copper nickel alloy that's made to look silver in color. Um, all U.S. dimes, quarters, and half dollars since 1965 are this clad composition, and coins before 1965 were made of silver. So the easiest way to tell is you turn the coin on its edge, its third side, and you have that copper edge with a little bit of silver or that copper nickel alloy that I was talking about. And then I have this coin, this quarter from 1963 for comparison, and right away you can see a major difference. So you have the clad composition here and then you have the silver composition here another term that you might hear is going to be mint luster and that is referring to a coin or a uh, the frosty shine on an uncirculated coin so as you hold a coin against a light source the mint luster uh, sometimes people refer to it as a pinwheel you can see the shine on this coin. I could probably pull it out of this two by two, but you can see how that kind of shine pinwheels around Kennedy's head on this half dollar. So that is called mint luster. Another term you're gonna hear, and I've already referred to it once, is a business strike. And I don't have great examples of classic US coinage, so we're gonna use the 1977 Lincoln penny as examples here, but you have business strike, which are coins produced for general circulation. So back to this 1996, this is a business strike coin. This is meant to be handled. It's meant to be used and abused through everyday commerce. Same with this 1977 Lincoln penny. Um, this is an uncirculated condition penny. Uh, again, you can see that mint luster, how that pinwheel rotates around Lincoln's head here. And even on the reverse, you can see that pinwheel uh, when it's held against that light source. And then, so this is a business strike. And then you have a proof strike, which is coins that are specially made for coin collectors. Um, so these coins are highly polished and pressed more than once uh, to achieve the finest quality strike. And these coins produce a mirror-like finish. So if I hold it at the right light, you can see how it, the fields of, these, of this coin has a almost a mirror-like finish on it as opposed to the business strike here. 
we hold them in the same light. It's, so other terms you may hear will be two by two or two by two flip or cardboard flip or plastic flip. So these are two examples of that. So this is a two by two cardboard flip. Uh, so they're both measure two inches by two inches. Um, so you can see how the size, that's just the name of the size, two by two, two inches by two inches. This is a cardboard example and this is a plastic example. So the two by two flip is just identifying this holder to help preserve coins. So I prefer all my coins in these, these cardboard or plastic flips, depending on the coin. Uh, this 1818 is a good example of a cardboard flip and you can mark them any way you want. You can see the front and back. It gives you, you know, it gives you the ability to hold the coin without damaging the coin. Kind of like I was handling these quarters earlier. Um, these quarters are, you know, general commerce quarters. It doesn't matter. They're not collectible like this large cent would be. Um, so this is a cardboard example and this is a plastic example. So I use these with coins that have edge lettering on them so I can see the edge lettering or coins that are too big to fit in these um, and there are different denominations. I'll go over storage of coins in another video but this 2x2 two two flip actually allows you to see front and back of the coin still um, but it also gives you this holder here where you can put any identification or you can write whatever you want in here. Um, I like to staple my 2x2 two two plastic flips so that the coin kind of stays in place so it doesn't fall out when I'm handling it. But I prefer all of my coins in these 2x2 two two flips. A few other important terms to know to kind of round this out is uh, key dates, semi-key dates, and better dates. So a key date refers to a date or a date and mint mark combination of a given series that's harder to obtain and more expensive. So key dates uh, will gener generally run a major premium on a given series. The next year down from that is referred to as a semi-key date. Those are slightly less difficult coins than a key date to acquire. They're a slightly less expensive, but still more expensive than a common date. Uh, so they sell at a little bit more of a premium. They're harder to acquire than a common date, so they're known as semi-key dates. And then you have better dates, which are more valuable than common dates, but not as valuable as a semi or a semi-key or a key date. So you have key dates, semi-key, and better dates. And you will see that and hear that a lot in this hobby as well. Now that we know what the anatomy of a coin is and have the basic coin terminology down, it's going to help us make more informed decisions um, and give us a little bit more firepower when we're in a coin shop or when we're talking to a coin dealer when it comes to buying or selling or just collecting of coins. Do your research before you start buying coins. Um, learn as much as you can about a specific series before you kind of dive into collecting. It's going to help save you guys a lot of money. Um, com coin collecting is completely subjective. So just because I like the classic U.S. coins doesn't mean that you have to. You may prefer Lincoln cents, or you may be you may prefer world coins like from England or ancient coins. Uh, so collect whatever you like. Just do the research beforehand. Uh, Google is a great great place to start. There's a ton of reference material out there. Uh, there's a ton of Facebook groups. Join the ANA. There's a ton of coin. Uh, groups out there that can help you and people that are very knowledgeable. Uh, so whatever you decide that you want to collect, I hope I was able to help out a little bit with some of today's video with the coin terminology. Uh, that's universal. So uh, you're welcome for that. And I hope you enjoyed today's video and I, I want to help you guys learn more with me. So leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications to get notified when I drop new videos. Um, I hope this has been entertaining for you guys. I'm just starting out my ventures here in YouTube land, so I have many more plans and many more ideas for videos, um, a lot more educational stuff, so I hope you guys stick around. Um, again, like and subscribe to my, to my channel. I'm Steve with Rustic Moose Coins, and until next time, happy collecting.